All praises, all praises, all praises to the heavenly, holy, almighty creator of infinity, eternity, the universe, the stars, the earth, the mountains, the oceans, the valleys, the seas, the clouds all creeping things humanity and all there is this is revelations dot unveiled dot detroit happy holy sabbath family we are back together again converging and convening at the threshold of transition where we are surrendering our carnal commonalities and exposing our cranial universes and bearing forth our souls. And we are at the point of transmission where we are here to receive the holy cosmic mission of the heavenly holy information and communication from the creator of all imagination to the holy nation, all praises and to the 12 tribes of the house of Jacob scattered abroad wherever you may sojourn. My continuous petition in prayer for your care and safety and my extended love and blessings to you and to my brothers and sisters of the world, the pending Israelites, those who refer to themselves as the melanated and Moors, the original man and children of God, the sovereigns and sojourners, the copper colored, the colored and people of color, the aboriginals and indigenous, the natives, Negroes and niggas, the Afro, African Americans and blacks, the descendants of slaves and those conquered and colonized. Oh yes, and we are blessed as we are here to offer our greatest grace and appreciation to the holy power for another seven days of the grace and gift of breath and life. And we are here congregating and aggregating and conjugating and convocating as we are in our consensual assembly where we are exp expressing the highest level of concern and compassion and coordinated care for the brothers and sisters of the nation. And as we have our arms extended and we are clenching in love and staring into the eternal souls and eternities of the brothers and sisters, we are here for the Holy Sabbath Wisdom Series, week 29. Oh yes, family, a continuous testament and testimony to our duration and the elaboration and escalation of our intellect in the holy wisdoms and the words of the heat and power and fire of the almighty. Oh yes, and family, my continuous acknowledgement and my humble appreciation and thanks for the participation of the nation in this wonderful series where we continue to grow and we continue to flow as we continue to read and know. And so family, we will be continuing with our review of the mystery of the history of the nation as well as our continuous reinforcement in the armor of the Lord and the salvation of existence with our enlightenment. And we shall begin at the revelations.unveiled.detroit channel standards in the book of Malachi chapter three, verse six. For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore you sons of Jacob are not consumed followed by our second heavenly eternal standard in the book of Hebrews chapter 13, verse eight, in reference to the holy anointed Messiah, the wonderful, the atoner, the savior, the redeemer, the king of Israel, whom the world refers to as Jesus Christ, the same yesterday and today and forever as we saunter into salvation, we make a studious stop 
in review and respect of the holy brother prophet Isaiah in the 28th chapter of his scroll verses 9 through 11. Whom shall he teach knowledge and whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast for precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. Oh yes, family. And as we are congealing in the revelations, Dr. Detroit Den, and we are upon our new year and getting ready for the festival of our holy day of the Passover. It is now becoming warm and we will still sit in our comfort and our love and our safety and we will grab the hands of our neighbors as we become still and quiet. And we began. And as we were in last week's episode, we were introduced to the prophet Elijah the Tishbite as he had meetings with King Ahab of the Northern Kingdom of the House of Israel. And then he took leave and dwelled among the forest at the brook of Jordan. And now he is on mission and he is visiting a widow and her son. And let us see and continue with the mystery of our history and the elevation of our nation in the book of First Kings chapter 17 verses 13 through 24 and Elijah said unto her fear not go and do as thou hast said but make me thereof a little cake first and bring it unto me and after make for you and your son for thus says the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. And she went and did according to the saying of Elijah, and she and he and her house did eat many days, and the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. And it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the mistress of the house, fell sick and his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. And she said unto Elijah, what? Have I to do with you, O you man of God? Are you come unto me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? And he said unto her, Give me your son. And he took him out of her bosom, and he carried him up into a loft where he abode, and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord, my God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourn by slaying her son? And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord, my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah and the soul of the child came into him again and he revived. 
And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, see, your son lives. Verse 24. And the woman said to Elijah, now by this, I know that you are a man of God and that the word of the Lord is in your mouth and is truth. Ooh, all oh, praise his family. So right there in the history and the mystery, we have a manifestation of the miraculous healing from death unto life by the prophet of the Lord in his merciful petition of the innocent soul of the son of the mistress. In family, we must continue to remember we are a holy nation, the breath and life of the Holy Creator is our spirit. And as we grow in this truth, and as we grow in this righteousness, we shall build our shield to heal all praises. And as we have donned our helmets and our armor, we get ready for the spiritual battle. We strengthen our thighs. We square our shoulders. We dip our heads. We get ready to head down the hallway of affliction and adversity through the arrows of anguish through the darts and daggers to our arrogance, pride and dignity as we are prepared to receive the pounds, the pangs and the piercing from the pineal to the pituitary with the prefects of perfection in the book of Proverbs chapter 29 Verse one, he that being often reproved hardens his neck shall suddenly be destroyed and without remedy. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. Whoso love wisdom rejoices his father, but he that keeps company with harlots spins his substance. The king by judgment establishes the land, but he that receives gifts overthrows it. A man that flatters his neighbor spreads a net for his feet. In the transgression of an evil man, there is a snare but the righteous do sing and rejoice. Verse seven, the righteous consider the cause of the poor, but the wicked regard not to know it. Scornful men bring a city into a snare, but wise men turn away wrath. If a wise man contends with a foolish man, whether he rage or laugh, there is no rest. The blood thirsty hate the upright, but the just seeks his soul. A fool utters all his mind, but a wise man keeps it in till afterwards. If a ruler hearkens and hears lies, all his servants are wicked. The poor and deceitful man meet together. 
the Lord lightens both their eyes. Verse 14. The king that faithfully judges the poor, his throne shall be established forever. The rod and reproof give wisdom, but a child left to himself brings his mother to shame. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increases, but the righteous shall see their fall. Correct your son and he shall give you rest. Yeah, he shall delight unto your soul. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keeps the law, happy is he. A servant will not be corrected by words. For though he understands, he will not answer. See you a man that is hasty in his words. There is more hope of a fool than of him. Verse 21. He that delicately brings up his servant from a child shall have him become his son at the length. An angry man stirs up strife, and a furious man abounds in transgression. A man's pride shall bring him low, but honor shall uphold the humble in spirit. Whoso is partner with a thief hates his own soul. He hears cursing and berayeth it not. The fear of man brings a snare, but whoso puts his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Many seek the ruler's favor, but every man's judgment comes from the Lord. Verse 27. An unjust man is an abomination to the just, and he that is upright in the way is an abomination to the wicked. Whew. All right, family. Yes, we are bringing forth our head out of that milieu of madness through all of that overwhelming wisdom thwarted at us that was 27 piercing prefects of perfection from the pituitary to the pineal and now our, our cranial cortex has been penetrated and now it oozes the sauce of salvation of the interior of our cranial madness as it oozes down the spine and enters into our chest cavity. And as we are now open and vulnerable in the wise words of the constructions and instructions of eternity, we continue our elevation, escalation, and the embarkment on the expressway of excellence as we continue in the book of Ecclesiasticus of the Apocryphal Text, chapter 21, verse one. My son, have you sin? Do so no more, but ask pardon 
for your former sins. Flee from sin as from the face of a serpent, for if you come too near it, it will bite you. The teeth there are thereof are as the teeth of a lion, slaying the souls of men. All iniquity is a two-edged sword, the wounds whereof cannot be healed. To terrify and do wrong will waste riches. Thus, the house of a proud man shall be made desolate. A prayer out of a poor man's mouth reaches to the ears of God and his judgment comes speedily. He that hates to be reproved in his way of sinners, but he that fears the Lord will repent in his heart. Verse seven, an eloquent man is known far and near, but a man of understanding knows when he slips. He that builds his house with other men's money is like one that glares or gathers himself stones for the tomb of his burial. The congregation of the wicked is like tow wrapped together and the end of them is flame of fire to destroy them. The way of sinners is made plain with stones, but at the end thereof is the pit of hell. He that keeps the law of the Lord gets the understanding thereof and the perfection of the fear of the Lord is wisdom. He that is not wise will not be taught, but there is a wisdom which multiplies bitterness. The knowledge of a wise man shall abound like a flood and his counsel is like a pure fountain of life. Verse 14, the inner parts of a fool are like a broken vessel and he will hold no knowledge as long as he lives. If a skillful man hears a wise word, he will commend it and add unto it. But as soon as one of no understanding hears it, it displeases him and he casts it behind his back. The talking of a fool is like a burden in the way, but grace shall be found in the lips of the wise. They inquire at the mouth of the wise man in the congregation, and they shall ponder his words in their heart. As is a house that is destroyed, so is wisdom to a fool and the knowledge of the unwise is as talk without sense doctrine unto fools is as fetters on the feet and the manacles on the right hand a fool will lift up his voice with laughter but a wise man does scarce smile a little verse 21 Learning is unto a wise man as an ornament of gold and like a bracelet upon his right arm. A foolish man's foot is set in his neighbor's house, but a man of experience is ashamed of him. A fool will peep in at the door into the house but he that is well nurtured will stand without. It is the rudeness of a man to hearken at the door, but a wise man will be grieved with the disgrace. The lips of talkers 
will be telling such things as pertain not unto them. But the words of such as have understanding are weighed in the balance. The heart of fools is in their mouth, but the mouth of the wise is in their heart. When the ungodly curse Satan, he curses his own soul. Verse 28, a whisperer defiles his own soul and is hated wheresoever he dwells. Ah. Oh, yes, family. That was the excellent experience of Ecclesiasticus as we die on the divine and sip at the wine of wisdom and we ingest and digest and we are even wider open as a being in the spirit of enlightenment and eternity. And as we begin to pull in the confusion of this contemptible, corruptible, and contaminated carnal container we call the flesh, we shall apply the glue and the soothing sage of the songs as written by the holy prophet brother King David, the apple of the Lord's eye as we visit his musical review in the book of Psalms chapter 17 verse 1 a prayer of David hear the right O Lord attend unto my cry Give ear unto my prayer that goes not out of feigned lips. Let my sins come forth from thy presence. Let your eyes behold things that are equal. You have proved my heart. You have visited me in the night. You have tried me and shalt find nothing. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. Concerning the works of men, by the word of your lips, I have kept me from the paths of the destroyer. Hold up my goings in your paths, for my footsteps slip not. I have called upon you, for you will hear me, O God. Incline your ear unto me and hear my speech. Show your marvelous loving kindness, O you that saves by your right hand. You save them which put their trust in you from those that rise up against them. Keep me as the apple of your eye hide me under the shadow of your wings from the wicked that oppress me from my deadly enemies who compass me about they are enclosed in their own fat with their mouth they speak proudly they have now compassed us in our steps They have set their eyes bowing down to the earth like as a lion that is greedy of his prey and as it were a young lion lurking in secret places. Arise, O Lord, disappoint him, cast him down. Deliver my soul from the wicked, which is thy sword. For men, which 
are thy hand, O Lord, from men of the world, which have their portion in this life, and whose belly thou fillest with your hid treasure. They are full of children, and leave the rest of their substance unto their babes. Verse 15. As for me, I will behold your face in righteousness. I shall be satisfied when I awake with your likeness. Ah, oh, yes, family. The stirring, soothing, and strengthening song of the Psalms of the Holy King of the United Nation of Israel, Brother Holy Prophet King David. Oh yes, family, and as we have, what is it? We have increased another week, another brick, another lane on this continuous road that we began 29 weeks ago. And we are well versed and we are well rehearsed and our armor has been banged in the battle in this buffoonish and emboldening land of Babylon. And we still are strong and we still are true and we still lend, commend, and submit ourselves on the path of righteousness as we continue to define and refine that walk, that walk in truth given to us by the holy anointed Messiah and Savior and Redeemer the wonderful, the savior, the king of Israel, whom the world refers to as Jesus Christ, who is the word of the creator made flesh. The same word written on stone by the creator's own finger and given to brother prophet Moses to present to the true church, the congregation, the nation, the 12 tribes of Israel as a holy covenant to observe and to do so that we may be deemed worthy for entrance into the 12 gates of the kingdom of heaven on earth. Let it be done, so be it family as we are now fully engaged in this continuing escalation we shall continue to grow as we continue to read review and know and as we interact with the brothers and the sisters of the nation we shall show as we continue to glow, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine into the 12 tribes, of the house of Israel, and to my brothers and sisters of the world. Happy Holy Sabbath. We are at peace. We are at rest. We give reverence, glory, and honor to the power as a testament and testimony to the covenant of the nation. And family, my continuous petition and prayer for your care and safety, your peace and harmony and security as we endure and persevere so that we may overcome and be right, righteous, and ready for the return of the holy anointed king 
for the millennial reign and the kingdom of excellence. Family, I love you. I love you. I love you. Until we are together again, this is revelations.unveiled.detroit. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 7, verses 6 through 9. For we are a holy people unto the Lord our God. The Lord our God has chosen us to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon us, nor choose us because we were more in number than any people, for we were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved us and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn to our fathers, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, has the Lord brought us out with a mighty hand and redeemed us out of the house of bondmen from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Verse nine, know therefore that the Lord, our God, he is God, the faithful God, which keeps covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. The book of Joel, chapter two, verse 27. And you shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else and my people shall never be ashamed. And to the scattered tribes, here is your promise of comfort. Book of John, chapter three, verses 14 through 17, into Isaiah, chapter 45, verse 17. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the son of man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Verse 17, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Isaiah 45, 17. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded, world without end.